Hi there, my name is Elizabeth Keener, and I'm here to talk to you about writing for the humanities. I feel this is a very important topic for this course because most of us are English majors. As an English major, or any student writing for the humanities, the bulk of the writing that you do will be essay writing. Now I know writing essays can be a true nightmare for some people, especially on a college level where expectations are high. This presentation is designed to teach students some tricks to better essay writing and to better writing in general. I learned a lot researching for this presentation and I hope I can teach you something too. Active engaged writing makes works from words. Eric Hayek. <sighs> Professor Eric Hayek argues that you cannot know what your ideas are until you write them down. Writing should not be about what you already know. Writing should make you think about new things in new ways, says Hayat. Everyone has different ways of getting writing done. Some people research for months, while others write an entire paper over the course of a few frenzied days. Both approaches have been known to work for some people, but here I will list a few strategies recommended by Professor Hayat in his book, The Elements of Academic Style, Writing for the Humanities. Eight strategies for getting writing done. Write daily. It is important to write daily because it makes what can be a difficult task into something habitual. Once something becomes a habit, it no longer feels like a chore. Number two, make small goals and meet them. Focus on giving yourself small, easily met goals for your writing. Do not plan to write for six or eight hours. Your aim is to create a habit of meeting daily goals so it is best to keep them realistic and attainable. Number three, when you're stuck, keep writing. We all get stuck. We all get writer's block but it's important to keep going. One technique to try is free writing. When free writing, you commit to write nonstop for a certain period of time without concern for grammar or punctuation. The idea behind this, according to Hayat, is that over time you may notice your prose change from free to engaged. My take on this is that in your mess of free writing, you may just find something you can use. Number four, avoid procrastination. Aside from regular procrastination, Avoid virtuous procrastination, excuse me. Aside from regular procrastination, there is always also something called virtuous procrastination, where you come up with other chores to do instead of writing. These can include household chores, like laundry or dishes, or other homework. But remember, it's important to keep focused on writing every day. Number five, make fear an ally. While many will tell you you should conquer your fears, Hayat feels you should embrace, embrace your fear when it comes to writing. Fear challenges us to do our best work and also forces us to acknowledge the flaws in our writing. Number six, start poor, finish rich. Do not worry about being too neat or too concise in your first draft. You may limit yourself that way. Allow yourself liberty with words. They can always be cut later if necessary, but they may contain crucial insight into your writing. Number seven, treat revision and research like writing. As you read and revise, locate the best ideas and start building the structure of your revision around those ideas while cutting unnecessary sections and sentences. This leaves room for new sections and sentences. It is helpful to think of research the same way you think of writing. You may want to develop a habit of res including research as a general part of the overall writing process. Number eight, take this advice. Most people will probably not try any of these techniques, but I believe they should be tried as they could potentially be very helpful to the writing process. I myself will try to start adhering to some of these rules. Do you think that any of these techniques could help you? Now that we have discussed how to be a better writer, I would like to turn my attention to the essay specifically. Let me begin by saying that there is no one way to write an essay, but there are techniques that can guide an essay writer towards success. We will begin by discussing the introduction. When approaching the introduction, P Professor Richard McGrath Tarley tells us that we must keep in mind what he calls the glorious four. According to Turley, a good introduction must contain these four elements. One, key aims and scope of essay. Two, a sense of critical orthodoxy, belief or practice. Three, an outline of methodology. And four, a concise statement of your argument. This is an effective way to set up what you want to say and how you will be saying it what texts you will be discussing, what others are saying about these texts, and how your opinion differs from theirs. Make sure you know what your goals are in writing about your essay. Your reader needs to know what you plan to talk about and why. Do not be afraid to jump right in with the first sentence. Be descriptive, but also introduce the big idea. It is important to know the difference between conceptualized writing and descriptive writing. Do you know the difference? 
which is better to use for essay writing. Internal coherency basically just means that one point needs to move smoothly and deftly into the next in a logical order. From Turley. Useful phrases. It is okay to use simple and effective phrases that you have seen before. Chances are that phrase has been adapted from someone else already. Here are a few examples of phrases you may find useful when writing an introduction from Hurley, chapter one. Turley. This essay explores. In this essay, I wish to investigate, consider, detail. This essay examines, proposes, demonstrate, contends that. This essay seeks to determine. This essay concentrates on. Do not be afraid to express yourself in your writing. Do not be tempted to emulate other writers. Be sure to use your own distinctive voice when writing your introduction. As Turley says, an introduction is like a first impression. The middle section. The middle section is where you deliver on the promises you made in the introduction. A good essay requires good structure. So the first thing we must do is look at the structure of the question we are answering in our essay. Here's an example of a humanities type question from Hurley, chapter two. Example, the Victorian dramatic monologue as exemplified by Tennyson and Browning involves a retreat from the romantic lyric I into the mask of persona. Discuss. According to Turley, this question has an AB structure. It can be broken down into two parts. A, romantic first person poems with first person Victorian poems as represented by Tennyson and Browning. When you look at it that way, all you really have to do is consider the development of I poems from Romantic to Victorian period. We can look briefly at first person poems from the Romantic period, then see what was different about Tennyson and Browning's dramatic monologues. Turley said we can answer the question following the same AB structure. Discuss Romantic first person perspective poems, drawing attention to some defining features. Discuss in more detail two or three more of Tennyson and Browning's poems explaining how they deviate from traditional romantic style. How would you approach this essay? Question. Critics. It is important to engage with critics who both agree and disagree with your argument. This helps add credibility to your work. Four reasons to use critics. To provide support or authorization at critical points in your argument. To be disagreed with as a means of developing your material. To act as sounding boards to your ideas. To act as springboards to your ideas. It is important to show a counter argument. A counter argument shows that your point remains valid or is even strengthened through comparison with other critics. It also shows your professor that you've done your research well. A one-sided argument is boring. Your reader must see evidence for or against to judge the merit of what you have to say, says Turley. Linkage. Many students have trouble transitioning smoothly between essays and ideas. Linkage is important because awkward transitions are jarring to the reader. Writers must link sentences, paragraphs, and sections, says Turley. Here are some helpful linking, linking words and phrases from Turley chapter three. Yet, but, in order to, however, instead of, nevertheless, despite, moreover, perhaps, and for instance. Here are some words and phrases to use with caution. Clearly, indeed, and in fact. And here are some words and phrases not to use at all. Basically, thus, and therefore. Conclusions. Conclusions are all about leaving a lasting impression on your reader. It is also the last thing your instructor will see before grading your essay, so you had better make it good. Be sure to use internal coherency in your conclusion. Be sure that you have made your point clear and that you have answered the question. Two kinds of conclusions are summary and discursive conclusions. In a summary conclusion, you are showing the weight of your argument, says Turley. Be sure to restate the argument. This gives the reader a quick refresher and you get a chance to call your best points into focus one more time. Turley says to remember to end on an evaluative note and not a descriptive one. Discursive conclusions. In a discursive conclusion, there is no wrap up. You do not provide a final overview. 
You just continue developing your ideas until the end of the essay, says Turley. This concludes my presentation on writing for the humanities. Have a nice day.